In this video, we prepare a subscription for Azure Image Builder. Hello, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. I finally got some time to work with Azure Image Builder. Overall, I'm impressed with the functionality, but there's a steep learning curve and hopefully I can help with that. Before we get started, please like, subscribe, tell your friends, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Also, if you're interested in learning more about Windows Virtual Desktop, check out my course, Zero to Hero with Windows Virtual Desktop at udemy.com. The link is below. I'm doing something different with Azure Image Builder. I'm gonna break this into three videos. There's a lot of information to go through, and I thought it would make more sense to do it in smaller chunks. The first video, the one you're watching now, is an overview of Azure Image Builder, and we also prepare the subscription for Image Builder. In the second video, we build and deploy an Azure Image Builder template. In the final video, we install software as part of the image build. I need to start this off with a backstory. I haven't worked with images in a long time, and when I did, I used a product called Ghost for creating these images. This worked by building a reference computer with all of the applications and settings, running sysprep, and then capturing the state. The state was used to set up other computers. This process captured a point in time snapshot of the computer state. The problem with this type of imaging is the base image gets outdated quickly. If an application or OS needs to be updated, then you have to go through a process of deploying the outdated image, updating, and then capturing it again. With Windows, you can't sysprep an OS more than eight times. At that point, you have to start over again, installing a new OS, adding your applications, and then building the image. But that's not the only way to image a computer. Another common method works by starting with a base OS install on the client, then it uses automation to add applications and customize that base install. The automation uses a series of tasks to add software and customization to the OS to prepare it for use. The advantage to this type of imaging is that an individual application can be updated by modifying the task sequence without affecting the rest of the imaging process. So what does this have to do with Image Builder? Well, a lot. When we deploy a VM in Azure, we use a generalized image, much like the old ghost image deployment I used to use. It's a generalized snapshot of the VM state. To customize an image, we could go through the process of building a reference image and then deploying applications, updating, and capturing. Those images would get outdated fast and we still face the eight sysprep limit. This process is not very efficient. Azure Image Builder solves this issue by incorporating an automation sequence or customization as part of the build process. That provides the advantages of a task-based image build while outputting a generalized image we can use in Azure. The customization process is task-driven using PowerShell for Windows or Shell Scripts for Linux. There's also a restart, update, and other customizations available. Before we can use Image Builder, we need to prepare the subscription. This only needs to be done once. We do this by first enabling some features and resource providers on the subscription. This is common for preview features. Keep in mind, by the way, that Azure Image Builder is in public preview. Things may change as it goes GA. It's been in public preview for quite some time, so hopefully this information will hold up when it goes GA. Once the features and resource providers are enabled, we create a user-managed identity. Think of a managed identity as a service account for Azure Image Builder. The managed identity allows the Image Builder service to securely interact with the subscription. Once we have the managed identity, we create a custom role definition. This is what gives the managed identity rights to create objects such as VM images in the subscription. This is a well-documented process. I'll make the scripts I use available on my GitHub page, the link will be below, but you could also follow along with the Microsoft documentation. Let's get started in PowerShell to register features and create the identity. Here we are in PowerShell, this happens to be VS Code. You'll want to make sure you're logged into Azure and that you're on the correct subscription before you register these features. I'll scroll down. We start by enabling Image Builder in the subscription and assigning a managed identity to access resources. This is a manual process. I created a set of commands. I'll make these scripts available on my GitHub page. 
The first thing we'll do is register features. Run the register az provider feature command with the provider namespace and the feature name. Here the provider namespace is Microsoft Virtual Images and the feature name is Microsoft Virtual Template Preview. So I'll go to this line and hit F8 to run it. There it finished. Mine was already registered, so it didn't take that long, but it could actually take a few minutes for this to finish registering. And you wanna make sure that it's done before you move on to the next step. So just run this get az provider feature command with the same provider namespace and feature name. That will let you know if it's still registering or if it's finished. Once that's finished, we need to register resource providers. We do this with the next command. This command loops through a list of required providers and registers them if they're not already registered. So we can just highlight this and hit F8. It should just take a few seconds to finish and all of mine were registered, so uh, that didn't take long. So that's it for the first part. We have all of the features and providers we need registered. So let's go on to enable the managed identity. Managed identities are like service accounts. This is what gives Image Builder the rights to create and modify resources needed for the image build process. We start by setting some variables. We need a resource group, name, and location. Keep in mind that there's limited regional support while Image Builder is in preview. This will also grab the subscription ID and add it to a variable. I have to cut into the video at this point. I missed a step when I recorded this originally and it's kind of important. We need to install the PowerShell modules AZ Image Builder and AZ Manage Service Identity. Run this line of code to get those installed if you don't have them already. Okay, back to the video. We'll scroll down. Next, create the resource group with a new AZ resource group command. This is where the managed identity will be created. Managed image will also go to this location. Now that the resource group's been created, we're going to create the identity. We'll start by setting some more variables. The first one gets the date and formats it as part of the role and identity name. Both the role definition and the managed identity need to have unique names. This is one way of making sure they're unique. Next, we create the managed identity with the new AZ user assigned identity command, passing in the resource group and identity name. Once that finishes, we need the principal ID. The next command gets that information and passes it to a variable. Our identity is set up. Next, we have to create a custom role and assign it to an identity. The next block of commands downloads a role definition template and saves it to the local directory. Make sure your command prompt is at the right directory before running the command. Run these three commands to download the template file. That finished and I open the file. It shows the name description and the rights the role will get. Also notice the scope is missing the subscription and resource group name. Let's go back to the script. The next block of code will open the file then update the subscription, resource group, and role name. Run the commands to update the template. Now if we go back to the JSON file, here it shows that my subscription and resource group name is filled out, as well as the name has been updated to include the date. We can close that file now. The next step will create the role definition with the new AZ role definition command using that JSON input file we just downloaded and modified. We'll run that command. Let's modify the screen a little bit. You can see that role definition was created. 
So far, we've created the managed image and we created the role assignment for the identity. The last step is to assign that role to the identity. Let's highlight this block of code and we'll run it with F8. At the end, we can verify it worked correctly with the get az role assignment command, passing in the identity name principal ID, and we're just selecting the display name and role definition. That did it. We now have all of our features and providers registered. We have our resource group, we have our managed identity, and we have our custom role assigned to that identity. We now have all the prerequisites set up for Azure Image Builder.